Today is a celebration of the labour and trade union movement. It's a celebration of that first discovery, which was when agricultural workers and workers in their workshops came together and they discovered their strength. And their strength came through solidarity. And that's what we're celebrating today. So it is solidarity to PCS. I chair the PCS parliamentary group in Parliament and I'm proud to be associated with the union. But let's be clear what they're facing because I think it's serious and I know the union itself appreciates the seriousness of it. Why is it that the government refused to accept any of our demands around the Trade Union Freedom Bill? We've been in negotiation and development of it, unanimous support for the TUC, Labour Party conference resolution in support of it, Gate Gourmet demonstrates exactly why we need it and yet the government refused to budge on a, a single issue within the Trade Union Freedom Bill. Why? Because they're terrified of solidarity action coming back into this country. That's what it's all about. And they're terrified of solidarity action because they're now taking on the public service unions once and for all. And why are they doing that? Because the next wave of privatisations, job cuts, regional pay bargaining, worsening of conditions, and yes, most probably coming back for people's pensions, is about to unroll if Gordon Brown enters number 10. And so they're looking for a public sector union, just as Thatcher did, identify the miners. This government is looking towards a public sector union to see if it can smash it. And that's what this dispute is all about with regard to PCS. It's a deliberate act of provocation. Gordon Brown standing up in Parliament, announcing 100,000 job cuts, then six weeks ago announcing a pay cut, and then over the last six months, the biggest wave of privatisations in the public sector we've seen in three decades. And this is the man trade union general secretaries are willing to sit down and nominate, possibly, for the leader of the Labour Party on the basis they can think they can negotiate with him. What world are they living in? What world are they living in? PCS are facing the first break the government wants to make is to introduce regional pay bargaining so that workers across the country working in the same job at the same grade will be paid different wages dependent on local market conditions. If it happens, if they can break PCS on that, it will come right the way across the health service, right the way across teaching and every other public service. That's why this dispute is so important and that's why we're demanding solidarity from other unions in this dispute. It's time others came forward in support of Mark and others. And you tell me, where the fuck are the TUC at the moment? Where are they? Pardon my language. What the hell is the TUC's role if it isn't to coordinate action across unions in solidarity when one of us is under attack and we know if they break one, they'll come on to others. But it isn't just solidarity with PCS today. It's solidarity with the Fremantle workers, GMB, Unison. You know their story. Letters. These are care workers in residential homes. They get letters before Christmas saying they don't sign up to the new contract, 40% pay cuts or the sack. Solidarity to Fremantle. Solidarity to Unison. Workers have been campaigning, marching all over the country over the last few weekends. These are the people who marched out ten years ago to elect a Labour government. Well, they're marching again and they're marching all over the country against new Labour cuts, closures and privatisations. I've just been up in Coatbridge in Scotland this last weekend in support of Elaine Smith, MSP, a good socialist in the Scottish Parliament. What happens? We're on demonstrations to try and save their accident and emergency unit that's being closed. Who's trying to head up the campaign against the closure? John Reid. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hazel Blear's on a picket line in Manchester against privatisation and cuts in the NHS, things they've voted through in Cabinet over the last year. Solidarity to the Unison campaigners. But it goes beyond that as well. This month you'll have seen the government's introduced and passed through the common stage, first stage, the legislation to privatise our prisons and our probation services in a way that not even the Tories 
attempted in the 90s. When the Tories' first wave of privatisations came about, it was described by one leading Labour politician as morally repugnant. Well, I agree with Jack Straw. I just wish he'd say the bloody thing now, quite honestly. Because it is morally repugnant that the private sector are imprisoning our fellow citizens. Our solidarity goes out to the POA and NAPO. You've seen most probably over the last couple of months Colin Moses, the president of the Prison Officers Association, and also Brian Caton, the general secretary of the Prison Officers Association, over the last three months have been taken to court twice because they simply sent out a circular to their members describing the type of policies that the union has in terms of resisting job cuts and privatisation. On both occasions, they've been dragged into court. They were looking for a sentence just to meet some of their members, but that's a, another story altogether. The, the position they're in now is it's a whole-scale privatisation of the probation and prison service on a way that Thatcher would have dreamt about. And we need to show them solidarity when they come into struggle to save their jobs and their services. For our conscience, as socialists, doesn't end at the English Channel or whatever. We're internationalists. So we send solidarity to those trade unionists who are struggling in Colombia just to survive because this government is funding through military aid the Colombian regime that murders trade unionists on a weekly basis. So solidarity to the trade unions in Colombia. Solidarity, solidarity to the people of, of Cuba who are standing against the, the American blockade, which again this government has done nothing to condemn. But I tell you this month especially, we send solidarity to the Chavez regime in Venezuela, bringing back, bringing back the oil, bringing back the oil into public ownership so they can redistribute wealth and tackle poverty. What an example to any future Labour government in this country. That's the solidarity we're displaying here and internationally. That's what our movement is all about. There's been reference to Blair going. He's most probably going on the 10th of May. That's what we've been briefed up. Um, just to get our flowers ready to deck before the rose as he walks out of 10 Downing Street. And there will be then a period in which Labour MPs will have to decide whether they nominate a candidate in this election from the left. Now we think that we can get the nominations. We think we can. We're in all sorts of negotiations with all sorts of strange people. I won't even mention them. <laughs> but I tell you one thing, as an aside, whoever comes forward, I'm absolutely staggered that anybody who voted for the war in Iraq dares to put their name forward to lead this country after 650,000 people have died as a result. Staggered. So what we're calling for is not just trade union solidarity, we're calling for political solidarity. If we want to see a left candidate on that ballot paper, if we want to see the hope, the prospect of a socialist prime minister, we need solidarity now to pressure and give confidence to Labour MPs to nominate a socialist candidate. Now there's a number and general secretaries and others who have stood back and said, well, we'll wait to see who goes on the ballot paper. This isn't a bloody horse race. You, had, you can't be a spectator in this. You have to participate. So I urge you all, through your unions, if you're members of the Labour Party or other organisations, make it clear to your local MPs or any MPs that you have any contact with through your unions. We expect them to nominate a, lay, a socialist candidate in this election to give everybody in our movement the opportunity to decide the future of this government, the future of the Labour Party, but also the future of the policies that will unite our movement again. And they're straightforward. Peace, not war. Public services, not privatisation. Decent pensions and decent, decent benefits so there is no longer poverty in this country. But above all else, we want to see a redistribution of power and wealth in this country on the basis of civil liberties and trade union rights. That's the basis upon which I'm standing. That's the argument that we'll put. And the reason they want to keep me off the ballot paper is because they're bloody terrified. They will demonstrate the strength of feeling in our movement in support of those policies and in support of a candidate advocating those policies. But I tell you this, over the next few weeks, this campaign will go on, ballot paper or not. It will go on to build a movement that is unshakable. 
We have seen it today in people marching in demand of basic civil liberties and trade union rights and will go on until we win because it isn't about some individual Labour MPs. It's about a movement, it's about a class and it's about solidarity. Solidarity, comrades.